Today, let's talk vodka business. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be a priest. I was, the priest I was who very, sells vodka. Cheers The for priest that. who sells vodka. So His vision. Because at the end of the day, if you're, if all you're doing is making money for profit and not giving back to the world and the community, I don't necessarily agree with that. And his journey. At night, I went to bartending. In the morning, straight to the morning, uh, bank, and then straight to Lord & Taylor. I often just oh work like, God. sometimes like a day straight. With a variety of vodka brands worldwide, we wonder which one has the best taste and the ultimate effect to make our favorite cocktail mixes stand out. So let's meet the founder of Cylinder Vodka, who has spent the last decade analyzing the alcohol market. And now his creation is Connecticut's 11th time award-winning vodka from national and global spirits competitions to the consumer's choice and platinum medal in the SIP Awards. Come and learn from a young entrepreneur on how to be independent and have your own business. Welcome to Sebastian Hall Show. So we're going to start with our first segment, which is the beginning. Welcome, Salius. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me here. No, it's really you're awesome. welcome. I'm ready for this. Um, so let's dive right into all of this. Um, where do you grow up? I grew up in Stanford, here. Stanford? Stanford Where are you originally from? Well, so I was born in Stanford, but I, yeah, I'm a Stanford native, you know, all my life pretty much. I spent a lot of time in Greece growing up with family, mm -hmm. um, kind of going back and forth between some winters and summers, but most of my life was in Stanford. Who's here, like mom and dad and siblings? Mom, dad, my sister, um, my grandparents, one side of grandparents, mm -hmm. and then I have an uncle, an aunt, two nephews, and then everyone else is in Greece. So like you hundreds. like living here and being so close to the city? Oh yeah, it's great. I love, yeah, best city ever. Yeah. No, well, not ever, but <laughs> it's convenient. You it's go convenient. often? Yeah, for Promote sure. A party? A little bit, yeah. Well, I've been now promoting the uh, yeah, actually, we just launched in New York uh, recently. So, um, Soho Grand Hotel just got cylinder, and so we've been going. Yeah, we've been going a lot more into the city because of that. Okay. Also, there's a there's a rooftop bar in the Bronx called Zona de Cuba, and they are they. I mean, they pour a lot of cylinder, and it's actually it's New York's largest rooftop bar in all of New York State. Largest Ooh, rooftop, yeah. I have to check they it out. They have cylinder. It is. So, it's a great time. Oh yeah. Oh my God. So we do. I do spend a lot of time in in New York. Lately. So how's your uh, parents happy with the you launching? Now, <laughs> now they are. Yeah. Now they are. were in, they scared at the beginning? In the beginning, they thought I was absolutely crazy. Very mad when I quit my full time job. Mm -hmm. Very like, not okay with it. But now they're like, yeah, ecstatic about it. So will you say you're closer to your mom or to your dad? Or your sister? Um, I'm very close to all of them. All of them. Yeah, I think equally. Maybe like, like an extra percent, maybe two percent closer to mom. Okay. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so I bet, I bet your sister's closer to your dad then. They usually say that girls get closer to the dad, and then as boys we get closer to yeah. the mom. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's mom. true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Okay. So who you say has had has the most positive influence in your life? In my family, or just in general? In general. Ooh, wow, um, that's a hard question. Uh, in my family, I guess my dad and, I, I, I guess both my parents. They're both like really hard workers. Um, raising kids, as I understand it now, is not that I have kids, but just seeing parents, people our age trying to raise children, it's so hard trying to juggle a full-time job and not one, but two kids and a marriage and College, college, it's all that stuff is so hard. So, um, I definitely look up to my parents, and they kind of earlier, early on in my life, you know, I saw my dad working multiple jobs, my mom working multiple jobs, trying to, you know, make ends meet and trying to make sure that me and my sister had a good upbringing. Definitely motivated motivated me to work really hard in life. You went to school for what business administration, something yes. or something completely. So different I actually, so I actually, <laughs> oh my god! So growing up, I wanted to be so many different things, uh, an architect, a 
priest at one point. Priest, you? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be a priest. The I was. Priest I was who very, sells vodka. Cheers the for that. The priest who sells vodka. The priest who sells vodka. Can you imagine? Oh my god. <laughs> you went to school so, in Connecticut. Or you went. You went out of state for college. So no. So I started in Norwalk Community College. Actually, I started. I, I went there with the idea to pursue architecture, and quickly realized that business was my passion, and so I switched to business. Got my associate's degree from NCC and then went straight to Sacred Heart and finished okay. my bachelor's degree. Will you say, uh, then you start working also in bartending, as I understand? Yeah, I started working... Were you like full-time bartending then college at the same time you were handling Yeah, I or? actually had, I had three jobs and school. Oh. So I bartended a few nights a week. Uh, during the day I worked at a bank. Mm -hmm. I was a bank teller and then a bank banker. And then on the weekends, I worked at the men's cologne counter at Lord & Taylor at a, that, that department store. So what time you did your home? You had time for homework? I, <laughs> I made From it. From 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. homework it, I made time. it work. Yeah, I made it work. There was, there was some nights where I remember there was a Friday where I started at the bank. At night, I went to bartending in the morning, straight to the morning uh, bank, and then straight to Lord & Taylor. I often just oh work like... Oh, God sometimes like a day straight is it true you get a lot of a lot of a lot of cash bartending but that's you what mean, that's what i hear that bartenders make they can make up to 800 dollars a week uh, my okay, so, i quit so, this job and i go bartender. So cash but, cash <laughs> i reported it all to uncle sam just want to say that okay good oh okay um we're getting serious one night <laughs> the most i've ever made was at 84 park do you remember 84 park yes i was like yeah i made 800 dollars in one night and it was, I think it was like four, maybe five hours. It's a lot of work though. Yeah, yeah and, and it was in the middle of the summer. It was one of the nights where we had the um, Alive at Five series going. Oh, those It was after that, yeah, yeah. And I, it was just, it was like, it was so hot. It was so humid. And I just, I don't think I've ever sweated more in my life. But I mean, but I mean $800 after, you can take a nice totally bath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just take the bath and all the money. And all the money, that's good. <laughs> Make it rain. Okay, so I guess this clearly gives you all the all this, all the base, the, 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 the platform, then you start thinking of, how, how did it start? You start thinking of like, I should have my own product, I should. Yes, how, yes. How was that whole process? And welcome to segment two. Okay, here we go to the present. Tell me more about the concept of Cylinder Vodka, how it's created, how, how what's the story behind? So the, the story behind Cylinder, I was bartending. I remember the, the specific night I was bartending. Oh, okay. And I was like, I was like, oh, I have a, I had a favorite rum, I had a favorite gin, I had a favorite bourbon, I had a favorite tequila, like all these different spirits were just so exceptional. And vodka back then kind of sucked. There was not one specific brand that I could think of that had a really like true calling for me in terms of like, I am in love with this brand of vodka. I had it all for any, anything else, I, tequila, gin, bourbon, everything else I had like a favorite, but I didn't with vodka. And so I started making one. I started researching how to distill vodka. Um, I started doing that in my parents' basement, just on the side, just oh my went in my spare time. <laughs> Dude, and you had a full lab gown with goggles. I, like, I didn't have any of that. It, it comes from ferment. What I know of is like what grains and potatoes. They said that that's all the right if you ferment that and yeah. That's so you it so it's what, what's the process of vodka like? So I, you could you could make you could make pretty much anything with a carbohydrate into vodka, okay. any yeah, potatoes, corn, any kind of grain. I mean, you can make virtually anything, any fruit, okay. um, any vegetable can become vodka. So um, I experimented with a number of different base ingredients and cylinders actually, it's a corn base. It's corn. So I found that based on my formula, the corn gave it a smoother profile and with like a little bit of sweetness to it. In this process, we're talking about what, like six months, eight, a year or two years into the process of... Um, so it took me about a year to truly understand the distillation process. Mm -hmm. And this was me just every single day online just you, you reading. Online and ju just, just you. Yeah, just mostly you. YouTube. YouTube, like just resources off Google and just trying to learn the process. And so it was about a year of trial and error, a year of like making just undrinkable vodka. like. Getting garbage, garbage, like in mommy's basement. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Oh my God, so interesting. And so then I, and then I finally I stumbled across 
um, a pretty good recipe. And, and then I just kind of ran with it. I was like, I have something. And the business experience that I had from school and the experience I had in banking, and I was in the business segment of the bank, so I was meeting with a lot of different business owners, and it kind of all fell together. And I just, I was like, I'm gonna start a vodka company. Like the name was your idea or? The name, so I brainstormed for like over a year. It was a big process of trying to like figure out, okay, who's, what's, what's not being used right now in the market? Mm -hmm. What's not being used? Right, so like coming up with names and crossing them off if another company has it, and then kind of like diving down into that name. It's like, all right, what does it mean to me? What is the, is this name marketable, right? If, if I put out this name, are people gonna think, oh, that's stupid, or oh, that's cool, or oh, that's unique and that's smart. And Cylinder came to me because if you walk into a bar, you walk into a restaurant, there are a lot of different elements that are cylindrical. Most importantly, the bottles. The bottles, the cups, they're, they're cylindrical. How how involved are you? Are you involved Monday through Sunday? Are you Monday through Sunday, morning till night? I'm okay. working. Monday, making yep. contacts, see where, which is good because you started here in Connecticut. Now is you, as you said before, it's already getting into New York. Yeah, and that's a big platform. It that's is great. Yeah, and we're also launching in Boston oh in a few my weeks. God. Yeah, that's so exciting. It's pretty cool. Um, it's scary though, because because not only are we we're expanding. Right, and we're growing, which is great for the brand, but we're also, that means we have to hire new people, right? We have to hire new salespeople, and that means we have to do new research on the markets that we're getting into because the buyers that were used to buying Cylinder out here, a lot of them are buying it because it's a local company, it's a local brand. A lot of them are buying it because they know Stelios and they go to the store and they see Cylinder and they buy it. So that means we have to engage with a totally different market in New York and Boston. and figure out what's driving people to drink vodka and why are they going to pick Cylinder over the next vodka. Are you planning to do like the spin-offs like sometimes they have like the strawberry flavor and yeah, yeah, we're, you're thinking of that? Yeah, we have, we have a few up. things lined up. We have a few yeah. surprises so lined this up. This is a standard? It's this, unflavored this, vodka, yeah. This is a standard one. Yes. Perfect. Um, also, I know that uh, you work with several organizations. He works with Clabs Homes that helps to improve family environments with disabilities and autism. He also works with Warco Water that's in Georgia for water portability. You're also involved with water.org, which is in Missouri, which is 5% of the bottle earnings go to clean water initiatives. Uh, the Collateral Cancer Alliance in Washington, D.C., the Women's Center uh, of Danbury, and Ability Beyond Disability. So why help, why is it so important to support all these different organizations? So. On top of those organizations you just mentioned, there are a bunch more that we don't list on our website that we work with. A lot of them because they're like, just so many. Um, one of them being uh, Stanford Dollars for Scholars. We recently donated to them. Um, and it's, it's just so important to help these organizations that have a good cause. Because at the end of the day, if, you're, if all you're doing is making money for profit and not giving back to the world and the community, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think every business should have a vision and a cause. Um, for example, like we're on top of donating money that we make, we also um, we're planting 150 trees this year. We're help, we're giving our effort to help clean the Long Island Sound. Like we're doing a lot more than just oh hey let's make a vodka and sell a product and make some money, right? There's more to that, and a big part of that giving back initiative is because I believe that. I mean, look, you look at what's going on around the world um, in terms of, you know, pollution, um, whatever you believe is a cause, the world is suffering, we're, we're slowly destroying it. And I think based on the patterns that we see, water is gonna be the next, you know, oil crisis. Water scarcity is gonna be in the United States. And I mean, it's already happening in California, right? Where, where your showers are regulated and, you know, if it's a certain time of the year, you can't, you know, uh, spring you know put turn your water sprinklers on it on your lawn it like it's crazy it's crazy to think about there, yeah. you know it's it, water being regulated for use and that's going to be a global crisis in a few decades and so part of the vision of cylinder is to give back to the organizations that are doing research to help prevent that or doing uh, putting money towards awareness so that people know that when they turn the faucet on and walk away for five minutes and come back and like oh i left the faucet on that's a big deal because you might not be able to do that 
in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you know? Yeah. So we really believe in these causes and we're trying to put as much of our resources into helping them with their vision. Today's trends, so let's see the future. How do you see your company in five to 10 years? Well, it's already growing, it's already been, it's what, growing. four years? It's growing so fast. Four, three, yeah, three. Yeah, so it's, so it's been on the market now for almost three years. Three. January's gonna be three years. Three years. Um, wow, it's six months away, so two and a half years. Um, Has it been like this? Since you've been definitely the past the past six months. Uh, past six months have been like insanely rapid growth, and um, I think the next wow the next five years are going to be crazy because we're like I said we're opening up our tasting room in Sanford. We're we have solid plans to open a distillery in Connecticut. We're also adding on brands. We're adding on a, a rum concept that we're working on. We're, we're working on some really cool stuff. So, Cylinder itself in five years, I think you'll definitely, you'll see it around the country, for sure. You'll see it in several new markets. Florida, California, Hawaii. These are already in the works, by the way. Mm. Florida, California, Hawaii, Arizona, Nevada, uh, Massachusetts, start Maine. Those flights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll need, a, I'll, I'll need a lot of points to... And then you need a lot of miles. Oh yeah. my God, we're going to start flying VIP private. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. we also, we have an agency that we're working with in Canada as well. They're interested in getting Cylinder into Canada. Um, and yeah, just hitting key parts of the world that are that either have expressed interest in Cylinder or where we see Cylinder benefiting from being in those major cities. I'm dying to taste it. Let me get mm. You should do the honor. Let's do it. Let me finish this. And okay. We should probably get new cups, but why not? <laughs> Whatever. You do the honor. Let's see. Mm. Tasting time. I'm nervous. Oh my God. You're nervous? No. Nope. Why? <laughs> no. <but> why are you... <laughs> oh, I love the sound. Yes. Let's see, people. I should have like a, 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 a cover my eyes with something. Cheers. Cheers. Thank well, you for having congrats. me on the show. Thank you, Sebastian. This is Thank you. So interesting. Okay. Yeah, nice, nice aroma, right? Like very yeah, like. Yeah, soft. But you have to really sniff it together. <laughs> Full flavor, smooth, yeah. so smooth, right? Yeah. Mm. It's amazing. I still. Hey, 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 <laughs> I still drink this and I go like, wow, it's so, it's just so smooth. So good. Yeah. Well, keep thank the bottle. You. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you. I'm gonna wrap it up tonight. We're gonna have a party. Come to Stanford. <laughs> so don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe to his Instagram and go to his website because there you can find all the future events where he will be with his amazing cylinder and see all the amazing causes that Salius and Cylinder is promoting. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching Sebastian Hall Show.